Try that again. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Morgan, uh, Morgan Herlocker. Some of you may know me from my open source work, either at uh, my former employer, Mapbox, where I worked on routing and uh, telemetry uh, research, or um, from uh, the Turf.js project, which I uh, created and manage. Um, today, though, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, road conflation, um, how we use uh, basically protocols for sharing street data, uh, making more data open and interoperable between base maps including uh, Uber movement. Um, so first off, um, I work for a nonprofit called Shared Streets. Um, we're just a small team. We work on uh, essentially protocols that allow you to describe a road network. So a particular street, you might know it by a name, um, like Market Street outside. Um, but when we're sharing data, we need something that's more granular than that. We need to be able to describe things block to block. We need to describe it in a way that everyone can know about. If five people mapped San Francisco, we would all be able to describe the street in the same way so that our data sets can be uh, cross-shared cross and linked. Um, we work with both private entities like Uber, um, other, other rideshare and scooter companies, things like that. Uh, but mostly we work with um, cities and other types of governments who have lots of data to share and also as many road networks as there are governments, uh, they each have their own. <laughs> um, so just an example of some of the things that we're thinking about. Uh, map conflation, so combining OpenStreetMap with another open road network to make a more complete open road network. Or um, mobility metrics, which is uh, doing privacy safe aggregation of rideshare and scooter data, bike data, um, in a way that can be shared with the public and people can understand how these vehicles are being used in their cities. Um, and even things like curb inventory for mapping out parking spaces in cities, things like that. All of these can be tied to a referencing system that anyone can download and use uh, freely. All, everything that we do is open source. Um, so first off, I, I, this word uh, referencing system, that's uh, something that people may be familiar with. Um, a linear referencing system is basically a way to take a particular street, run it through a function, and then return a stable ID. So if we uh, take OpenStreetMap, it's got all kinds of complexities in it that are not going to be the same from base map to base map. Um, so essentially what we do is we do a step where we normalize this graph. We make sure that, for example, a street actually splits uh, consistently across each block. It's not like uh, one street that just runs for miles and miles and miles. Um, and then we take geometric and classification information that's inherent to the street and use that to generate an ID. So like roughly where did it start, roughly where did it end, what's the rough like bearing and curvature of the street. If you combine all this stuff, then you can actually map out uh, a street. I could map it out. You could map it out. Uh, some other, one of those cars driving around with the camera on top could map it out automatically even. And they would all generate the same reference ID. Um, so the data they collect, which might be very varied, could be uh, combined into a more robust data set. So just an example of this, um, there's a lot of cities and governments that have road closure data. So like the government operates the 911 uh, line, so they have a unique position where they're able to capture this data more easily than anyone else. Um, but someone like Uber or a Mapbox or a Google Maps has lots of traffic data. Now, with uh, just one of these, you can do certain types of analysis and certain types of, of operational infrastructure. But if you were to combine them, it would be much more powerful. These things, uh, most map data sets have sort of a, a, a power effect where when they're combined, they become more accurate, more efficient, more powerful. Um, but that's, this is really difficult. Road closure data, for example, is often described with just like very rough, um, like human labels. So like, Oh, it started uh, on Market Street, which is, you know, eight miles long, um, and it ended somewhere around Second Street. Well, what does that mean? You know, it could be, it could be anything. Um, so, so when we have IDs, though, that are applied, we can basically take one of these, these data sets that would normally be kind of locked into the base map of the originator, apply the IDs, link them, and now you have something that combines both data sets. Um, Another aspect of this that's really important, even if you're using one uh, road network, over, over time, that road network can change. So OpenStreetMap has millions and millions of edits that are coming in constantly. 
as they as they that map evolves, then your data is actually expiring. It's got a shelf life. So for a data set like Uber Movement, when they publish that, if we can link it to uh, a reference ID like this, we can actually it actually means that the data can last much longer. People can use it for years to come, even as the road network evolves. Um, and on uh, the subject of of granularity, you know, a lot of this data comes in at like very rough granularity. Um, there's traditional kind of referencing systems like TMC codes that have been around since the 90s and used for like radio broadcasting traffic. Um, we do this graph normalization step, so that's always uh, block to block. And for certain types of data sets that are even more high resolution, you can specify a linear reference that's a, a ratio of that street. So you can, you can actually get to, down to the precision of things like parking spaces um, and share that sort of data. Um, this is really important when you're trying to combine open data sets like uh, the shapefile bespoke road network off of a city data portal that you'll often see and something like OpenStreetMap, which is used by people like Uber, Mapbox, and whoever else. Um, so one example of this is really concrete is we took Uber speed data uh, from movement and actually assigned linear uh, shared streets reference IDs to this. We did the same thing with point data from the city of New York where they had published a huge data set of uh, pedestrian crash uh, injuries. So that there's like a giant data set that's online. You can see exactly like what happened at each crash and, and kind of what the, the report on the ground was at the time. We linked these and we could actually show correlations between the prevailing speed on each of these roads at a particular time of day and, and how, how those, uh, those injuries kind of played out. Um, this is really important for Vision Zero and anyone in a city who's like interested in reducing pedestrian deaths, which is sort of uh, priority one from anyone who's, who's working in the city space right now. Um, there's a, a very in-depth tutorial on how we did this online. Um, we can share this afterwards as well, but if you're interested in trying to link two data sets like this, I recommend you check this out. And uh, yeah, my colleague, Emily Eros, who's a, a, a really awesome at explaining how these things work. Um, and lastly, I wanna talk about taking this Uber speed data. And uh, actually we've open sourced some code to link this to the OpenStreetMap network, um, load it into a OSRM, it's a routing engine uh, library and then actually generate predictive ETAs over the course of a week. So in this case, what we're looking at is a couple of control routes that we happen to select. One is Oakland to San Francisco, another one is uh, Market, where we are now to the Presidio. And what you can see here is actually, given all this speed data, what would be the shortest route between these origins and destinations over time? Uh, things like this are really useful if you're, if you're a planner or anyone kind of involved with sort of understanding how long it's gonna take from, to get from A to B. Um, which is really important for just making our cities more efficient. Um, additionally, this is open source. If you want to try this out in your city, um, there's like almost 40, maybe more cities with Uber speed uh, data that are available now. Um, so I'd recommend trying that out, especially in San Francisco. Um, thanks.